Well, good morning, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Well, my name is Dr. Alfred Craig, and this is Daily Bread. Praise God. Welcome, welcome, welcome to all of you that are here with me this morning. Praise God. Both you that are online on your computers. Praise God. I'm watching you, Beatrice and Belinda and Beverly Wells and Virginia. Fully love. Praise God. All of you that are on there so early this morning. Praise God. Uh, see, I'm, I'm watching as you're coming on Facebook. Maria, Angel, praise God. Of course, Montoya, as always. And uh, God bless you all this morning as you're coming on. Patricia, God bless you this morning. It's exciting being with each of you uh, every morning, Tuesday through Friday, 6 a.m., praise God. Then on Sundays at 7.30 uh, a.m., praise God, to just come and share with you the living word of God. God is faithful. And one good thing about God is that he never fails. The Bible says God's mercies are new and fresh every morning. Glory to God. So we know that God's mercies are fresh every morning. God bless you, Diane. I see you. You got on also. God is a faithful God. No matter, no matter what we go through in our lives, we need to know that God is faithful. No matter how things appear. And I'm telling you something. You know, you're not the only one. We all no matter who we are, no matter what position we are in, whether we are an usher, whether we're a choir member, or whether we are a pastor or an apostle, we all, every one of us, have to make a quality decision every morning to step out of our five senses and walk by faith and not by sight. Uh, uh, you know, that's what the Lord Jesus had to do in his life. You know, he, had, he had times in his life where the Bible says he was tempted at all points, like as we are, yet without sin. I mean, he never yielded to anything you know, that was adverse to the will of God for his life. And so we have to make that quality decision every morning. Lord, I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. I, I believe that you are who you say you are. I believe you can do what you say you can do. I believe that you have what you say you have. I believe that I have what you say I have. And God, I'm making a quality decision today to trust in you with all of my heart, to lean not to my own understanding, but in all my ways, I'm trusting you. I'm going to acknowledge you, and I'm trusting you this day to direct my path. I believe this day, praise God, and you do too, praise God, that the path of the just is as a shining light that grows brighter and brighter into the perfect day. I'm declaring over your life this morning that your life, your situation, your circumstances will get brighter and brighter and brighter throughout this day. Glory to God. So don't be moved by what you see. Don't be moved how you feel. But be moved by what the Word of God declares because no matter where you are, what situation you're in right now, God is alive. A friend of mine said that. That's what the Lord spoke to him. He said, the Lord said, live your life like I'm alive. Live your life like like I am alive. So today, let's live our life like Jesus has risen from the dead. We serve a living God who is very active in his children's lives. Praise God, and I'm praising God for you this morning on that also. Well, let's begin this morning with prayer. Father, we honor you this morning, and we just give you thanks for your goodness, your love. We thank you as always, precious Father, for your divine presence and for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, that the Spirit of God is in this place right now. And upon every person, whether they're on the computer, whether they're on their telephone, whether they're on the, on the Internet, Father, or they're on Facebook, Father, I'm thanking you, God, that you are omniscient, you are not present, you are sovereign God, you're everywhere we need you to be in every situation that we may be facing. I'm thanking you, God, that <clears throat> you never leave us nor forsake us. So, Father, I'm asking you today, according to the word of God, that you would grant each of us a spirit of wisdom for our day and revelation in the knowledge of you. Cause the eyes of our understanding to be open, that we may know the hope of your calling, that we may know the riches of your glory, and that we may know what is that exceeding greatness of your power that is to us as believers, Father. And, God, I'm, I'm trusting you today, God, according to Ephesians 3.20, that God, throughout this time of daily bread, that God, you alone, Heavenly Father, are doing exceeding, abundantly, and above all we can ask or think, far beyond our dreams, our own desires. You're doing right now in our lives, through this time, throughout this day, exceeding, abundantly, and above all we ask or think, according to your power that is at work in us. So I'm thanking you, Father, for, the, for all these things in advance today. 
Thank you for a supernatural day and for every person listening to my voice today in the precious and mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray everybody said, amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. The Lord is faithful, isn't he? God bless you, Bishop Tracy. God is a faithful God. Amen. How <laughs> God bless you, Dora, uh, Ella, all, all of you that are coming on. Yvette, I see all of you coming on. Praise God. Welcome to Daily Bread. <clears throat> Again, we're here every morning, Tuesday through Friday, 6 a.m., Sunday morning, 7.30 a.m., to give you your, your, your daily boost in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Now, uh, yesterday we, we got into some things and we began to talk about the blessing and the favor of God on your life. We talked about how God uh, in the scriptures in Genesis, when he, Bible said he, in, in Genesis 1, 26, it said, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. You got that? But we said that God didn't just stop right there. That would have been enough right there. To be made in God's image after his likeness. I mean, that would have been enough. <laughs> I mean, if God had not did anything else but made us in his image and his likeness, that by itself would have been enough. But, but God did not stop there. The Bible says, then God said in verse 28, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. <clears throat> have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the face of the earth. In other words, God is saying, take charge, reproduce, prosper in this earth. But God is saying that, that you're not, even though you're made in my image, I, I want you to take charge. I'm putting the whole earth in your hands. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. We said, you know, uh, in the old days, we had a committee by the name of Flip Wilson, that whenever, Flip Wilson that whenever something did not go right, uh, it says that he always said, the devil made me do it. Well, let me tell you something. <clears throat> In God's original plan, when he created Adam and Eve, the devil could not make them do anything. He could try to influence them, but he could not make them do anything because God gave Adam and Eve full dominion over this earth. He created us in his image, in his likeness. Then he said, glory to God. Uh, be blessed, <clears throat> prosper, reproduce, be fruitful, multiply in this earth, subdue it, means bring it under your control, take charge of this, be responsible. I think the, the limit Bible or the message Bible says, become responsible for it. So I'm declaring this day that you and I are taking charge this day to reproduce. To prosper. We, we're re becoming responsible. Recognizing that this thing. Has been left in our hands. We've been given the authority. Of the name of Jesus. We've been given the power of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. We've been given the accompaniment. Of all the angels of God. And so no weapon. That is formed against you can prosper. And every tongue. No matter how it wags. Against you will be condemned. Because you are a child of the living God. You're created in God's image and you've been blessed by him. That blessing and that favor of God is on your life. We said this also yesterday that uh, uh, that the word blessed, we said this, uh, I don't know where I have that at, but I'll, I'll, I'll get that to you in a few minutes. But the word blessed, we said, means uh, to empower, to prosper. It means God favored them. That word blessed actually means when he said he blessed them, it means he favored them. He put his favor on their lives. And then when it says, uh, it says also that it empowered them to prosper. So you are favored by God this morning and you are empowered to prosper in the name of Jesus. So I thought about this with a lesson I'm going to teach you today on the blessing. Number one, that you are blessed. Sit to me right and say, I am blessed. That's right. Now, the reason why I said that because sometimes in our lives, when situations and circumstances hit us, you know, that we can't even explain, sometimes you almost, you just kind of stop and say, God, why is this happening to me? But I want to encourage you right now, keep moving forward in your life. Even though you've come to a point where you don't, you don't understand what's happening in your life, you don't understand why things are happening the way they're happening, I'm telling you, the blessing is on your life. You are empowered to prosper. <clears throat> and one of the words for prosper means 
to advance. That means that in spite of what's going on in your life, you're going to advance forward in regards to what's happening. And when that blessing of your life, the blessing of God is on your life, you're going to prosper with the favor of God on your life. So I want to encourage you today, keep moving forward. God's got a plan to bring you out of this situation. The scripture says there's no temptation taking us than that which is common to man. But God will, with every temptation, also make a way of escape that we may be able to bear it. So there's a way of escape made. It may be a small light right now, but I'm telling you, hope is there. Lift up your head, open your eyes, your spiritual eyes, and you're going to begin to start seeing that even in this dark situation, God is God already, he's already designed you're out. <laughs> Glory to God. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers us out of them all. Can you receive that this morning? So I want to encourage you to stay on the move. Don't stop. Don't stop praying. Don't stop getting in the word of God. Don't stop going to church. I need you to go ahead and continue to move forward this morning in Jesus' name. You got that? Now, I'm going to give you a scripture because, you know, one of the things that God did with Abraham, he promised that Abraham, that this blessing and this favor would get on you and your seed. Amen. You know, because the blessing that God gave to Adam and Eve, God put it on Noah and, and his family in Genesis chapter, Genesis chapter 9, verse 1. But then also uh, we see in Genesis uh, chapter 12 where God brought Abraham into the blessing and said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to favor you, Abraham. And I'm going to make your name famous also. Amen. But now we're going to see here, because God promised that blessing to Abraham and his seed, that, that, Abraham, that Abraham's seed, a young man by the name of Isaac, was in an area of the nation where there was a great famine. And I want to encourage you to listen to this very carefully, because when God is on your side, you're going to come into those, those su some supposed not enough situations. But when that blessing is on your life, and God's favor is on your life. And God says, keep moving forward. Take charge. You're in authority in this situation. Use my name. Use my power. I'm with you to confirm it in Jesus' name. So listen to what happened here. And, and this is Abraham's seed, Isaac, who now is an heir of this blessing. That's on his father, Abraham. That was also on Noah and his children that God originally placed upon Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. So listen to this. In Genesis chapter 26, verse 1, it says, And there was a famine in the land. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know about you, but did, was any of y'all here back in 2010, 11, and 12 when that famine hit America? The banks went under, car dealerships went under, people found a bankruptcy left and right, people losing jobs, losing homes. Are you following me? Remember that? What do you do when there's a famine? That's when we, 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 we come back to who we are. But even in the midst of famine, when you're the seed of Abraham and that blessing and that favor is on your life, are you following? Then we are to continue to move forward. Many of us kind of succumb to some of those things because we were watching CNN too much. Are you following? And I'm telling you something, that that's when you take charge because the blessing and the favor of God is on your life. And listen to this. That's the time to keep moving forward. Look what God says. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. In other words, his, his, his father Abraham, had the, the famine had hit him too. Now that same famine is hitting his seed, Isaac. See, in other words, famines lack insufficiency. That thing comes on everybody but it's what we, it's how we respond to it that makes the difference. You got that? We like you do research on Abraham. Abraham came out of that famine. Bible said very rich in silver and gold. <laughs> Glory to God. And so it's it's not reacting, you know, to what the devil is doing, but it's responding to what God has already declared in your life that you are blessed. Glory to God, and you are favored of God. And just keep moving forward because God's hand is on your life. Can you receive that this morning? There was a famine in the land. People lost jobs, lost houses, 
lost husbands, lost wives, <laughs> you know, lost. But what do I do when a famine hit? It said, beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham, and Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gera. And those what happened in verse 2. And the Lord appeared unto him. I'm going to tell you something. The Lord will always come to you in your famine. When you're going through a, 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 a lack time in your life, you're going through a time in your life of not enough or sometimes just enough, God wants to bring you into that place of more than enough, even in times of famine. Oh, glory to God. Can you receive that this morning? And look what it says here. The Lord appeared unto him and said, don't go down to Egypt. Don't go down there. Amen. You, you know, God said, I can cause you to bloom right now where you're planted. I can cause you to be blessed right where you are right now. Sometimes we want to pull up and, and, and think that pulling up you know, and changing this is going to work. No, God says, look, don't go down to Egypt, but dwell in the land where I will tell thee of meaning that I'm going to show you. I'm going to direct you during your famine time. I want you to keep your head up, your eyes open. And your ears alert, because in the midst of your famine, in the midst of that prognosis that you receive from the doctor of that, of, of that condition in your body, in the midst of that, I'm going to tell you what you need to do. Don't react. Don't react out of your emotions. Because sometimes we move, we move on our emotions too quick. But he's saying, no, don't go down there. Don't do that. Let me guide you in this situation. And then in verse 3, he says this, sojourn in this land, and I will be with you. He said, in other words, stay right here where you at. Are you following me? Don't, don't, don't go nowhere, he said. He said, because God says, because I'm going to be with you in your situation. So sojourn in this land, and I'm going to be with you right now where you are right now. In this land of famine, stay right here. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to set you up as a light in the midst of darkness, a beacon, a trophy of what I can do when everybody else is dealing with famine and saying it's not going to work in this situation. But God says, stay right where you're at. He says, search on this land. I will be with you. And look what God says. And I will bless you. Genesis 26 verse 3. I will bless you. You know what he's saying there? I'm going to cause favor to get on your life. I'm, I'm going to cause I'm going to cause favor to come on your life. I'm going to empower you to prosper right where you are right now. Oh, God, can you see that? What is favor, Pastor? Favor means God's going to call. He's going to use His power, His influence, and His ability to help you. And not only that, he's going to cause people to use their power, their influence, and their ability to help you. He says, so stay right where you're at. I can bless you in the midst of your famine. I can bless you in the midst of this prognosis. I can bless you in the midst of what you're going through. He said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to empower you to prosper. I'm going to cause you to move forward in the midst of this situation that you are going in on in right now. Glory to, that's right, Billy. Praise God. Hallelujah. And look what he says here. I'm going to bless you for unto you and your seed. See, God always says, I'm going to bless you and your seed. He said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you and your seed. Now he's telling Isaac the same thing. I'm going to bless you and your seed. Your family is going to make it through the situation. Your children are going to make it through the situation. I'm going to cause the blessing and the favor of God to not only come on you, but on your children. And in my case, my natural children, but also my spiritual children. Praise God. I'm declaring that favor and that blessing on all of your lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. He said, listen what he says here. He said, and I will give you all these countries, these nations. <laughs> Glory to God. God says, don't look at your past because your past will get you depressed. Don't look at your present. Because your present won't do, won't, won't do no better because you're going through a lot of situations in your life. He said, but I'm going to give you. Look to the future. Get hope again. 
I'm going to give you. Get ready for what God is going to do in your life, not what the devil is doing. Don't get, don't get caught up what the devil is doing. Don't get caught up in the famine. God said, because I'm going to bless you. I'm going to empower you to prosper. I'm going to cause my favor to come on your life in an abundant way. Glory to God. I'm going to cause you to move forward in this situation. And he says that I'm going to bless you. I'm going to give you nations. I'm going to give you another house. I'm going to give you that other car. I'm going to give you that other job. I'm going to give you new relationships. Even though some people let you down. He said, I'm getting ready to give you. So don't, don't get stuck on what the devil has done and what has happened that's been taken away from you. Get stuck on what God's getting ready to give you. Glory to God. Get stuck on El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. Get stuck on the almighty God, the all-sufficient one. The, the first, the last. Praise God. The beginning and the ending. Get stuck on him. He which is, which was, and which is to come. The almighty God. He says, I'm going to bless you in the midst of your famine. I'm going to give you nations. Then he says, I'm going to perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham your father. That means the covenant I made with your father Abraham to bless you. God said, I'm getting ready to perform that in your life. Glory to God. I'm getting ready to perform that in your life. But don't go the way that you was going to go. Don't make no rash decision right now. Don't make an emotional move. Stay put. I'm with you. I will bless you. I will prosper you. I will favor you in famine. Glory to the Lamb. Can you see that? He said, now I'm getting ready. And he said also, I will perform that oath. That covenant that I swore to your father Abraham. I'm getting ready to do it in your life. So what, the, so what was Isaac's response to this? Look, look here. Uh, and and let's, let's, let's skip on down to Genesis chapter 26 verse number 12. And, and this is what we must learn to do because sometimes we stop. You're following? But, but look what, what he did in verse number 12 here. Then Isaac sowed in that land. See, sometimes you go through things, we, 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 we withhold. You know, let's just say, get all we can, can all we get, then sit on the can. But no, I just said, no. In my time of famine, it's not the time to close my hands, it's the time to open my hands. Isaac sowed in that land of famine. And what happened as a result? Because he had the promise of God that I'm going to bless you in this land. I'm going to bless you in this land. I'm going to prosper you in this land. Hallelujah. Isaac sowed in that land of famine and received in the same year a hundredfold. Why? And the Lord blessed him. Oh, my God. He blessed, uh, uh, he blessed Adam and Eve. He blessed Noah and his sons. He blessed Abraham. And now we can see that same blessing following onto the seed of Abraham and his seed. And even in famine, this famine is not strong enough to withhold a child of God that will continue to move forward and, and look and see the, the blessing and the future that God has instead of being moved by their emotions or reacting to what they're seeing and, and what's going on in their lives. We make too many, sometimes, I've done it myself before, we make emotional decisions based on what's going on instead of hearing God's voice that says, right now where you are right now, I'm going to bless you right where you're at. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year, that year of famine, a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. That means the Lord put favor on his life. And the Lord called, empowered him to prosper on the seed that he sowed. Glory to God. Can you see that this morning? And see, that's what the Spirit of God was speaking to my heart about. Before, I had not really mentioned to any of you about, you know, partnering with me and things like that. But whether you're partnering with your church at home, in your home church, or you're partnering with me here on this daily bread. But when you're going through things, 
sometimes we withhold. That's a time to open your hands up. And, uh, and, and so for you that would love, like to, I, I receive that, you know, in our church, and our ministry with nonprofit corporation. But, but it's not just that, but it's the, the power of sowing in your time of famine. Not, not, not stopping what God wants to do in your life. Because that, that unleashed the blessing. That unleashed the blessing that was on his life. You got that today? At that time, there was an agrarian society. And his sowing was seed, natural seed. But he got an abundant harvest from that natural seed he sowed. Well, we don't do that no more, but we do so, we can sow our finances. And we can, because most of the time, that's what we need. We need, we don't need grain. You know what I mean? We need finances. We need health. We need family turnaround. We need marriage turnaround. You got that? But what he did, he sowed in that time. And the Lord blessed him. And in verse 13, it said, And the man waxed great, went forward, and grew until he became very great. And look what the Amplified Bible says this. Then Isaac sowed seed in that land and received in the same year a hundred times as much as he planted. And the Lord, listen now, this Amplified version, and the Lord favored him with blessings. And the man became great and gained more and more until he became very wealthy and distinguished. Now think about this now. This is a follow-up from verse 1, 2, and 3. This is during a time of famine. That God, Verse 13 said, The man became great and gained more and more in famine and became wealthy and distinguished. Now the, the Message Bible, look, how, look what the Message Bible says this. The Message Bible says, And Isaac, Isaac planted crops in that land, the Message Bible, and took in a huge harvest. God blessed him. This is the Message Bible. Genesis chapter 26, verse 12, 13 and 14. The man, this is what it says. The man got richer and richer by the day until he was very wealthy. Now, this all came out of a time of famine. This came out of him, him listening to God, not responding, not moving, for, going down to Egypt. But listening to God, allowing God to direct him, the man got richer and richer by the day until he was very wealthy. It said he accumulated flocks and herds and many servants, so much so that the Philistines envied him. I'm declaring that favor on your life right now. I'm declaring that on you right now in the name of Jesus, that the blessing of God is on you. The favor of God is on you. Amen. I'm asking you all to, because this is what I do a lot now, ministering and, and loving people. I'm asking many of you to, to join with me in partnership. Uh, uh, for you that are on Facebook, I, I added a little link on that. Go, just go to PayPal. If you, if you have a PayPal account, go to PayPal and just send it to imchurch54 at gmail.com. It'll go right into our church account and we'll keep accounting of it for you. But it's not just the accounting of it, but it's the seed that you're sowing. It's the blessing that will accumulate. It's the blessing that will accumulate to your it's, I'm sorry about that. It's the blessing that will accumulate to your account. Then the same thing with you that are on, uh, on online with me, you know, on the internet. Do the same thing. Just go to PayPal or you can contact me and, and I'll give you some ways on how you can do it if you don't have a PayPal account. But the whole goal is you want to get involved in partnership. You want to get involved in when you receive a word like this to act on this word. Amen. And I, and I set myself in agreement with you that in the midst of your famine situation, whether it's relationship famine, whether it is health famine, whether it's financial famine, I set myself in agreement with you that the favor of God and the blessing of God that's on you as a child of God is released on your life. And this year is your best year. Because God has favored you in Jesus' mighty name. I decree it right now. God bless you. Now, I want you to share this word. If you're on Facebook, click share. Share with your friends. Uh, if you, and like it. And of course, I always enjoy reading your comments. Amen. But until tomorrow, this has been a wonderful day. 
We'll be back here again at 6 a.m. again tomorrow morning. But until then, mm -hmm. may God's riches and his very best be yours in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a blessed week. Have a blessed day. See you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye now.